serious, people of ridiculous. What is scariest thing that happened to you that was not paranormal? I, F, was traveling in Egypt with two male friends. All of us 17 stroke 18 at the time, 1989. We were walking down the street in Alexandria and two men got out of a black car. Grabbed me and threw me inside. My friends jumped onto the car and held on while it tried to drive away. Then other people started crowding around it and shouting. So they opened the door and shoved me back out and just drove away. The 10th of May. 2019. I was turning into the end of my street when a dump truck rear-ended me pushing me head on into oncoming traffic where I hit another car. The dump driver was texting and never hit his brakes. He was going 60 miles per hour. Technically I was dead. A cop was two cars back. He pulled me from the wreckage and performed CPR. Reviving me. I was medevaced away. I remained in a coma for 42 days where I expired twice more. I awoke to be a paraplegic. I woke up feeling sticky and gross. I thought to myself gross. Did I drool all over myself while sleeping? So I go to the bathroom to wash up and look in the mirror. I'm covered from my lower lip to upper chest in blood. I head out of the bathroom toward the kitchen and tell my mother to call a doctor. She nearly faints upon seeing me but I tell her I'm okay and in a wash up. I clean myself up and after washing most of it away I see the wound dead center on my neck where a pimple was. It is doing the thing you see in movies where blood squirts out with each heartbeat. A bandaid does the trick for now and they cauterize my neck as a longer solution. What I had thought was a pimple was in fact a blood vessel that decided to make a Y branch except the new branch was straight out my neck. A simple surgery fixed it but damn was that scary. Falling to what would have been my certain death before hitting catching a branch on the way down. While falling instinct took over and I wasn't scared. But as soon as I was safely on solid ground and it sank it I could barely walk or breath for a couple minutes. When I was in college. I had gone to a classmate's apartment for a group study session. The area was crowded with cars parked along the curve. Took me a while to find parking and it was about two blocks away. By the time I left to go home. It was around 1am. As I was walking back to my car. I heard footsteps behind me. I looked back and saw someone in a big coat and wearing a hat. It was dark. So I couldn't see their face. I got a little creeped out. So I quickened my pace. Again. I heard their pace quicken as well. I began to feel scared. But I didn't want to convey that to him. So I just kept walking and occasionally would look back and see him about 10 feet behind. Following. As I approached my car. I took out my keys and got ready to unlock just the driver door. Instead of using the remote. I quickly got in and locked the door. And he stood right in front of the passenger door just looking at me. I turned the car on and right when I was about to leave. He waved. But in a very slow. Creepy way. Trigger warning for our pay and abuse. My ex raped me. When I was left crying and broken I told him I was leaving him. He grabbed the sides of my face and looked me in my eyes and told me if I tried to leave he would kill me. Then he would chop my body into tiny pieces. Put them in zipper bags. Put them in a cooler and go on a road trip cross country. Throwing the pieces out along the way so no one would ever find me. It took me 3 more months to get an escape plan together and move across the country to get away from him. And once this pandemic is over I'm moving to another continent. 737 I was on encountered a coincidence of air currents and jet wash from a plane ahead of us on approach. We were fairly close to the ground and the plane turned F king sideways. One wing pointed at the ground. The other at the sky. Happily the pilot recovered and we were fine. But for a moment I had calmly accepted that this was how I was going to die. I went to my job, a grocery store, to pick up my check and this guy walked in behind me. I went and grabbed something to buy and he was behind me again in the line with nothing in his hand. He finally picked up a thing of gum and when I walked out the store. He put the gum back and followed me out. Once I got to my door of my car I quickly got inside and locked the door to find him right behind me and acting like the car next to mine was his. When I guess he realized I wasn't in his reach. 
he went back inside the store. It might not seem so scary to most. But I had a full blown panic attack in my car that day. I had been backpacking across Canada. After walking for 21 hours and not being able to find a place to camp for the night I just kept walking. I had been walking on the right side of the road and kind of dozed off while walking. Anyone who has walked dead tired knows how this is done lol. And a truck passed me on my right side. While walking I had inadvertently walked out to the middle of the highway. My. 28F. Old. Late 60s. Mentally ill. Non-medicated and drunk of a neighbor developed a fixation on me. We lived on the bottom floor of an apartment complex. Just my apartment and his. Every time I left my apartment, even just to smoke or do laundry, he would come out and try to talk to me. Invite me to dinner at his apartment. Talk about sex. Told me he loved me. Just said really often creepy shit. The last straw was when he bought me a bunch of gifts and I refused them so he stood outside my apartment without me knowing and I guess just chewed a bunch of sunflower seeds and spit them at my door. I ended up telling the landlord and got him kicked out. Maybe one week later after he was kicked out I was outside smoking at 6am and he walked up to me out of nowhere and confronted me madly but I ran inside. I hate confrontation. I should have gotten a restraining order but I never saw him again after that. I was on an airplane that had to drop 500 feet to avoid an oncoming aircraft. There was no warning. One minute I was playing Pokemon with my brother. The next the plane just dropped. There was shockingly little screaming. Just a lot of gasping. After the pilot told us what happened. The flight attendants went around checking on folks. She got to me and said wasn't that fun? Double quote. No. You're crazy bitch. That was not fun. My mom boyfriend kidnapped me when I was younger. I have no memory other than me in the car. Screaming and clawing trying to get out. All he said was we're going to the park. I hope that man dies. Dozing off for a split second while driving which led to a panicked overreaction to my tires moving into the gravel on the shoulder of the roadway. My overreaction jerked the SUV back onto the roadway so fast that it turned a 40 plus degree angle and then flipped four. Five times. Rolling down the interstate about a quarter of a mile. I was conscious through it all. Including the two bounces of my head against the asphalt. Vehicle came to rest in the ditch and I climbed out in a panic over what just happened. I was driving to work in a pretty substantial snowstorm. I ran over something hidden in the snow and it immediately flattened my tire. Causing my car to spin out. While I was trying to regain control. Another car hit me right in the driver's side door at about 50 miles per hour. Pushed my car right into a concrete barrier. And the force pushed me in the driver's seat into where the passenger's seat is. That was almost 10 years ago. And I still get anxiety driving in the snow. On my 18th birthday a guy broke into my house while I was home alone. When I shouted what the fck are you doing? He apologized and ran off. Later that evening I was sexually assaulted by the cop who drove me home after I filed a report about the break-in. The latter was much more frightening. I'm really, really sorry that happened to you. I am also really, really sad to hear how often people are sexually assaulted by cops when we're at our most vulnerable. A friend in HS was raped by a cop when she tried to report a rape. Turns out it's pretty common. A guy who we did not expect to be a mafioso threatened my mom. I have heard everything they said on the phone call. He said he had a gun. So then I started to worry. Because I thought he was gonna kill me and my mom. I was like 13 when this happened. I can't go to that place anymore without the fear of finding him and getting shot. Things like this can easily happen in my country. But you're more likely to get threatened by a mafioso if you own a company. Keep that in mind. Thank god now this guy has a restraining order so he can't bother us in my hometown. I hope. Anyway. Sorry for my English. And thank you for reading. 3. A belt was wrapped around my neck by my garbage piece of shtx and I struggled to stay conscious while he screaming want to f king die bitch. Then he somehow snapped out of his rage and started to apologizing and crying like a little bitch. F king bastard. 
I can wholeheartedly say I will be relieved and overjoyed when that dude F King dies. The first one that comes to memory is at my old job as an overnight nurse at a veterinary hospital. It was just me and one other nurse at about 4am in a fully locked hospital taking care of hospitalized pets. My co-worker had gone upstairs to take a food break. And I suddenly hear the outside door close. Two men carrying rifles with their faces partially covered and wearing lots of insulated clothing walked into the treatment area. I froze trying to consider all the options of heavy items I could hit them with. They started laughing and then I realized it was two of my co-workers. They had met in the parking lot to go on a hunting trip and thought they would come in and say hi. They got some choice words from me and a stapler almost thrown at their heads. I was at the beach. In the water. Holding my boyfriend's two year old son in my arms. Made the mistake of turning my back to the waves. And a breaker hit me in the back. I went underwater. And the boy was ripped out of my arms. I stood up as quickly as I could. But I did not see the boy anywhere. Just as I was about to start screaming for my boyfriend. The water receded and I saw him revealed. And rushed to pick him up. That panicked feeling of losing a child will always stay with me. Me and my sister were oblivious to potential child predators. Long story short. We went with some dude's backyard to see his vegetables he was growing. He wanted to teach us golfing and he placed his hands on my sister's hips and spoke in a soothing voice telling her it's okay. Let me guide you. I felt uncomfortable and took my sister by the hand and said we gotta go. It could have been worse tbh. We were 8 and 12 years old. One day. In the middle of my civics class. The intercom came on and said we were in a lockdown. This is not a drill. There is nothing more terrifying than the words this is not a drill fortunately. Nothing came of the event. And what they thought was a potential shooter. Was a police officer. There to get his kid. Who had apparently forgotten he had his gun on him. It was still terrifying at the time. Because my sister. Younger than me. Also went to that school. She was in the other building. For younger students. And I immediately thought that any shooter would be in that building. Because less people would be able to fight back. Fell in very deep snow while snowboarding. It was the first time I've experienced that I couldn't breathe because my head was covered in snow. Almost got trampled to death in a crowd. I was on vacation in Spain and went to the Soma Music Festival. There were two venues one for the day shows. Another for the night shows. Once the day shows ended, they piled everyone into buses or others, including us, took the subway. When we all arrived, they hadn't opened the venue yet. People kept arriving. And a weird thing about Spain is people just don't queue there. So they all tried to push through from the back. No one had anywhere to go. For a long time. My feet didn't touch the ground and I felt elbows and knees jabbing all over my body. Some people were smoking and we all got cigarette burns. It hurt like hell and I was scared we might actually die if any of us toppled over. Eventually they opened the doors but it was so upsetting we ended up not staying long. We watched half of Kraftwerk's set and went home. So at least I got to see Kraftwerk live. Myself. My wife and our 9 month old son were on vacation in Hawaii. It was a calm. Sunny day and we were very close to shore where the water went up to my waist at best. I was holding my son when all of a sudden a larger wave, taller than me, approached. Instinctively. I raised my son to my chest to shield him but the wave managed to sweep me off my feet. The water pried him away from me as I tumbled in the water. I got up. Frantic. To see my wife looking for our baby in the water. By the grace of God. He didn't recede with the water and we found him a foot or so away from me on his back. That was the scariest thing I've ever experienced and I often have flashbacks about it that leaves me in a cold sweat. I'll never underestimate the power of water again. I once worked for an agency that sent me to a castle on the moors, as if it couldn't get creepier enough. I'm driving home at around 2am in fog and rain full headlights on along this dodgy road. I go over this bump and I'm met by a pack of ponies just chilling in the road. I've never done such an emergency stop in all my life. 
The car actually swung to the right. The ponies were fine but I think I aged 5 years. I just woke and I was just half asleep and then I saw somebody walking at the garden of my house and he came closer to the window and he looked inside. Then I looked him and he ran away. I got up. I put some clothes and I went out in order to find him. But he was gone. Another time some kids tried to rob me and some other guys but we ran away. In high school I was a graffiti writer. One night I was on a bridge that was built for an Amtrak train. Short story. In order for me to avoid getting killed by a full speed train. I had to crawl under the wedges of the train track. It was like being inside of a tornado. Not fun. I was rushed to the hospital with such abdominal pain at 3am I thought an organ had ruptured and I was going to die. Turned out to be an excess of acid buildup in my stomach had eaten through the lining. They gave me some serious antacids and I felt better. But wasn't allowed to eat for a few days after. I was never very social as a child and my parents forced me to hang out with a disturbed classmate who ended up pulling a knife on me. Got hit by a car. Got jumped. Got kidnapped and stuck in a trunk for the better part of a day. SWAT raid. Got robbed. Don't do drugs. Kids. When I was 8 I was in a pants store. A woman walked up to me and grabbed my wrist. Natural born idiot. I walk with her. She gets to the front of the store and my dad tackles her. He holds her down and tells me to run. I run backwards a bit. And my dad got up. She pulls the fake parent card. And dad plucks the drain cap. Revealing a picture of my birth certificate. Showing his name as the father. The lady runs. Security gets her. Bad thing is. She didn't spend much time in there. That's how screwed up the courts are. I'm sure many people have experienced this. My scariest and most recent experience was my Caesarean section. Although numbed I could still vaguely feel everything. I felt a sting and burn as they sliced through everything. Then my body jerked around as they pulled my child from me and what they said would just be pressure actually hurt quite a bit. I could feel my child being forcibly ripped out of a small open area in my body and at some point I think I passed out. I woke up a couple seconds later and could feel them forcing my insides back together and could even slightly feel them sewing. I thought the only thing I was supposed to feel was a pressure when they pulled the baby out but I felt a bit of everything. I've never passed out in my life before then. I was scared the deeper they went the less numb I'd be and was shaking terribly. Most painful and scary moment of my life. I was working overnight painting the set at a theater. I arrive around 10pm as everyone else was heading out. When I get back to the dressing rooms to put my stuff down before setting to work. I find that a belligerent. Not very coherent homeless man had somehow slipped in a back door and was trying to get me to let him sleep in there. I'm a young woman alone in the building with this guy and there was no way I could let him stay. But I was terrified he would get angry and attack me. Luckily I was able to calmly convince him to leave. But you. Forced off the road by an oncoming snow plow turning a sharp corner on my side of the road. Spun I think about 4-5 or so times it seemed. Cable box on a telephone pole softened my impact in a trailer park development. Lost a grill to my then Ford Ranger but was in a fog after the fact being able to walk away. Thankful. My first poop after major abdominal surgery. Also my first sneeze is up there on the list. The poop was pretty paranormal though tbh. Never seen any shit like that before. My rapist was knocking on my door once and asking to come in. Scared me shitless. It was like I was frozen in time. My sister. Who he had molested was sleeping and I remember holding her hand as I listened to him. I told him to leave in the most stern manner and proceeded to cry afterwards. I love you. I truly do. I hope. That you'll both fully heal. Gross to be beautiful. Strong. Smart and successful. He is the scum of this earth and he will pay for the harm he has caused. Take care of yourself now. Getting lost in Grand Central Station at 5 years old. I'm mixed. And when I was younger I could pass for white if you didn't take my hair into consideration. 
I was separated from my mom and stepdad and I had just stopped and froze in the crowd of people trying to commute. A middle aged white lady came up to me and asked me if I wanted to go home with her and I said no and I refused to walk away with her. Another woman with bright red hair came and saw I was in distress took me to the lost and found and I was reunited with my mom. She explained to my mom that the first lady and me didn't look right together and I seemed to be pulling away. I don't remember much else of that day. But the bright red hair lady always comes back in my dreams. Edit. For this missing parts. I witnessed a murder. A man getting shot in front of the convenience store. The assailants were professionals. They stepped out of shadows dressed identically and pulled out hamless revolvers. They emptied them into the man as he exited the store. Then they slipped back into shadows and were gone. I was in my car. Stopped at the stoplight. I saw it over the hood of my car. The man laid in a bloody pile. And I called him ambulance. But I did not stick around. One night it was so incredibly dark and foggy that. At most you could see up to 3 meters in front of you. For some reason my friends and I decided to go outside since. On paper. That sounds fun as hell and it was for a while. Until we started getting kinda creeped out. I had a I gotta get the FCK out of here type feeling. And I'm glad I did. Couple minutes later. We hear a group of girls screaming like they were about to get murdered. So we just ran. Legit thought somebody was dying within 20 meters of me. Edit. I was 9 years old. So I didn't help. Nowadays I would without a second thought. Was with my sister's ex-boyfriend in her car. That morning we learned someone was after him because he stole some drugs from them. We had rang the police and were on the way to the station when a car appeared behind us and forced us to stop. We were bundled into the car. Threatened and driven to their den. I was imprisoned for a few hours whilst the ex was taken away. He returned what he had taken and I was free to go a few hours later. I was on my way home with my dad at night time here in Maine. We have a large hill on our road where we can see for miles. As we were cresting the hill. There was a very large. Deep purple flash in the sky unlike anything either of us have ever seen. It lasted less than 10 seconds and expanded from the size of a pea held out at arm's length and super bright. To the width of four fingers held out at arm's length and super dim. It wasn't symmetrical. And the edges were jagged and expanding at different rates. It basically looked like a star gate opening up then fading away. It was probably one of the coolest scariest things I've ever witnessed. I find this scary because to this day, 15 years later, we still have no idea what it was. My cousin almost drowned me once because he decided it was perfect timing to start panicking in the middle of the pool. He shoved my head underwater so he could get above water and closer to the wall to climb out. He was always the weaker swimmer. I have many. Including history of abuse. But I think in terms of seemingly benign it has to be the time I got a concussion. I worked at a dog daycare and was unlatching a gate to let a dog out when another one jumped on it ramming a bolt into my head. I blacked out for a minute so they sent me home early. Actually went to the doctor and they said I was fine. Just keep an eye on it and stay awake. I lived alone. Though. And no amount of self will could keep me from nodding off. When I woke up 18 hours later I couldn't move my limbs and my vision kept fading in and out. It was not sleep paralysis. I was fully oriented to my surroundings and could sort of lift my left hand. But my legs were frozen and I wasn't able to sit up to reach my phone. About 10 minutes later. I was able to call my mom back. Because I had many missed calls from her. But none of the words I was saying made any sense. At that point I should have gone to the ER but I couldn't afford it so I just stayed on the phone with her for a couple of hours. I'm okay now, obviously. But I dealt with after effects for a long time. Take concussion seriously. When I was 18. I was helping my grandmother get from her car to the front porch. She collapsed right at the front gate. No pulse and stopped breathing. Did two person CPR on her with my mom, me doing chest compressions. Her doing mouth to mouth. We brought her back but I will never forget the wet crunching sensation of her ribs breaking beneath my palms. 
so basically. One day I was walking home from school and it got dark because lived 2 hours away from my school. I was about an hour away from home when I noticed that a guy had been followed me ever since I left the school grounds. I started freaking out but kept walking. He started getting closer to me. So I started running. The guy then started running after me. I ran all the way home and told my dad about what happened. Two weeks later. My dad shouts me downstairs. On the news was the same guy I ran away from. He was put in jail for murder and arson. This happened back when I was deployed to Iraq in 2008. One day we actually got allowed a 12 hour refit period at the free on board. This base was huge and pretty secure and had beds. Hot water. Laundry. Barber. PX. Decent food. All of that. So I get geared up and shave that morning and me and the rest of the platoon crew leave our vests behind and go for a light hearted walk to the DFAC. Excited at the prospect of non-MRE food. We're all walking and joking and whatnot when a loud whistling sound cuts us off. Before we can even react an object falls out of the sky. Hits the ground. Clang. In the middle of our 12 guy group and bounces away. One of our more dense comrades goes and gets the object and holds it up. It was a 60mm mortar shell that did not detonate. That free on board hadn't had a mortar attack in 18 months and there were no shells that followed. Needless to say our pants were collectively shat. I'm from Mexico and like 10 years ago I was just on the street in front of my house cleaning my dad's car. And out of the blue a car with people full with guns and rifles stops near me. Five of them step out of the car. Point the guns at me. Ask me to kneel. And start shouting that I should know better than keep selling on their turf. I was scared AF. Didn't kneel and told them that I didn't knew what was going on. They asked me to kneel two times more and put the guns in my head before another one looked outside the windows of the car. And said nah. He's just a neighbor I've seen him around here. Let's go. I was driving with my wife and infant son in Baltimore at around 10pm one night and had just pulled off the highway. A few blocks from where we lived. There was an older trucking coming toward us without headlights on so I gave it a quick flash to give them a heads up. The truck immediately flipped around in the middle of the street and started following us. I flew through a few neighborhoods before I felt the coast was clear and parked somewhere random in between a few larger cars and turned everything off. A minute or so later. We watched the truck drive by looking for us still. After they went by. We pulled out and drove away for about 30 minutes before driving home. Probably almost got kidnapped when I was on a road trip with my mom. We stopped at a gas station and I hung around by the car while she went in to pay. An SUV circled the, otherwise empty, station a few times before pulling into the spot up and across from ours. It had tinted windows. Nobody got out. Had I been more aware of things. I would have gotten into the car and locked it. But I just stared. When my mom came out. It sped away. Well. I was in 5th grade. It was recess time. I usually stay with my good friends. But one time we said that we should go stay with the majority of the class. They were playing with rocks. Throwing them in the air. Until a classmate his nickname is Dudu. He got a very big rock and throwed it at the sky. The next moment I knew the rock landed around 2 centimeters from me. That was the scariest moment of my life. Just 2 centimeters and I would have been done for. Was cliff diving with some buddies the day before high school graduation. Well. There was this cliff that was separated from the lower portion. There's about a 4 foot gap between them. On the way up the cliff, about 30 feet up, and across the two. I slip and lose my balance. It's either fall in between them and risk dying or jump as far as I can. I jump. I land on a huge boulder that is flat. Luckily but my ankles and legs are destroyed. I ended up swimming back to where our vehicles were which was about 2 miles. I didn't break anything but I was on crutches for months. It was awful and to this day I refuse to jump off anything sketchy. That was the time I flipped and rolled my truck and escaped with only scratches. Being slammed against the center divider of the highway and being conscious throughout the whole ordeal. Long story short. 
As I sat on the pavement leaking blood. I called my mom and told her to tell everyone in my family that I loved them thinking I wouldn't make it. After that I sat there propped up against the center divider feeling the life pour out of me until the ambulance arrived. My mind was going crazy. But the fear of leaving behind my daughter and wife was something I'll never forget. Sitting in the front passenger side of a car. A truck next to us made a last minute jerk of his car to avoid hitting a car on the shoulder of the road. He hit it anyway. The truck did a 360 and the end of the truck swung 3 inches from my face while I was looking out the window. Heart was pounding afterwards realizing how close to dying I was. Robbed at gunpoint by 4 dudes who were clearly blazed on crack or meth. It was a hostile takeover of a home improvement store during the night stocking shift. They pistol whipped us. Insulted us. Shoved and kicked us. Threatened to kill us. They got $6,000 and got away after a 3 hour ordeal. Pretty scary for a 17 year old kid. So one day I got a text from some unknown foreign number. I opened it to see a MSG saying hey darling I'm Momo. Wanna have some fun? And the profile pic was some weird girl. I didn't know what was all that Momo challenge and so I replied not interested. Then it replied that she hacked my phone and has all my contacts and images and said she would hack all of them. I didn't believe it and just left it without replying. Then after an hour she sent a pic of me with my friend saying you look cute. I completely freaked out and panicked I mean how did it get my pic and number did she really hack my phone? I simply blocked that number but was worrying all day and felt someone was stalking me. Then the next day it was found out that all this was done by some guys in my college for fun they got our numbers from attendance records and pics from Fasa Book Nasaya and that it was the Momo challenged prank. I was driving home from a late shift and cut through a pretty sketchy residential neighborhood. As I turn onto a very dark street, I quickly came up on a guy dressed in all black head to toe. I had to slam on my brakes not to hit him and he glares at me and subsequently lifts a gun he was holding and points it at me. For what feels like 20 minutes. This masked dude trains his gun on my head. And I just sit there wondering if the next time I blink. A gunshot will be the last thing I ever hear. After that though. He quickly lowers the gun and runs off. I'm only alive today because that dude decided not to kill me. My uncle is a boat mechanic. He works the night shift. Working on the boat motors and stuff through the night. In 25 years. He had never taken a sick day or asked for time off. But one night he was just horribly. Horribly sick and he called in to say that he wouldn't be working that night. That night. Some guys came into the shop. Shot and killed the two other night mechanics. And stole a bunch of stuff. When I. F. Was 18. I had my own apartment and lived alone. My bed was right next to a window and one night I awoke to a strange man halfway inside the window. I don't know if I was too young and dumb to understand the gravity of the situation. But I literally sat up and yelled at him. He said he thought it was his apartment. I told him to get out and fix the screen before he left. He did. It wasn't until long after that I realized how much danger I could have been in. But since then. I always arrange my room so the bed is as far from the window as possible. I lived behind a gas station where a guy was selling puppies. I asked if I could pet one and it jumped in my arms. He told me it was $600 so I told him I would be right back. After two side shuffles and lots of giggles I thanked him for letting me pet him. Returned the pup. Went into the store and left. He went crazy about a week later and kept interrogating the gas station attendants as to my whereabouts. He found me and left me a note on the back of a Bud Light Lime 12 pack saying he has kittens and college money for me if I let him in. He covered his truck in palm fronds and parked in my front yard to watch me. My front yard was the size of two parking spots so I figured it out rather quickly. After calling the cops he would circle the block in his camo truck and pound on my door at 3am every morning until I got a cop buddy to park in my yard every night. He tried to charge me with stealing his dog. Case was thrown out and he was arrested for murder a year later. A. Not much. Just my car catching fire. Me and my friend were doing a service that required us to open the gas tank. 
We were using the electric pump connected to a car battery to drain the petrol. One of us, him, got distracted and the cable moved and sparks were generated. With more than 2 gallons, tank and the bottle where we were draining the fluid. That shti ignited really fast. Luckily we had our fire extinguisher right there just in case so we were able to extinguish it right away. It lasted like 5 seconds lol but it felt like 5 minutes to us. Also when I robbed at gunpoint. Me. Someone who's never touched a fire gun. I'm not American. Edit. When I was robbed at gunpoint. Not me assaulting someone else. A random drunk dude walked up to my family while we were enjoying the evening and watching fireworks when I was like 8 it was weird. He also was ranting in Spanish. I am taking Spanish in school and now understand some things he said. Like how he was looking for his girl and he stole some flowers for it. I was at a water park when I was about 7 and it was a water slide. I was going down like you would. At some point I flipped and did a 360 on the slide while going down because I guess I was moving next to the walls too much. Luckily I landed completely untouched. Note. This was an open top slide or whatever they call them. I could see the sky. I guess I'll call them semi slides. When I was a child. I was at my grandmother's house. A man tried to break into her home while I was there. With my siblings. My grandmother had to fight the man off to prevent him from entering her home. She locked the door once she had him out the door. He tried finding another way in. And I watched from the window praying he would just run off. Eventually. He took off on foot. Snatched a woman from her car. And stole her vehicle. I still wonder what he would have done to us. Had he gotten inside. I've told this story here before. When I was about 10 or 11 I was standing on a bridge over a lake near my house. There was about 15 of us watching some kids ride their bikes off or jump into the water. All of a sudden someone picked me up and threw me over the side into the water in the middle. I was a strong enough swimmer to make it to the side but it was quite tough as I was wearing hiking boots and there were enough weeds to tangle my feet pretty good. I remember hitting the water in such shock that I took a deep breath and sucked in a stomach lung full of water. When I finally got to the edge some older kid came up to me and said. Oh sorry I thought you were someone else. And walked away. Almost choked to death when I was home alone. Cheese filled breadsticks are delicious but when melted cheese slips down your throat. It gets real. Really quickly. Thankfully I remembered a clip I saw about the self performed Heimlich. Slammed myself down on the back of a chair three times. On the fourth try I could feel myself getting weak. And it worked. I haven't eaten cheese filled breadsticks in years now. Dear lord I actually choked on a triangle shaped cheese sticker petizer as a small kid. I was so scared and I don't think I ate cheese sticks again until I was an adult. The feeling of the mitted cheese might as well have been cement. Terrifying and you're the only other person I know lol who has had this happen to. I was sound asleep upstairs in my apartment. I woke up and must have heard something. I jump out of bed and run downstairs yelling about someone being in my apartment. My front door was actually ajar. I ran butt naked to beat up someone in my apartment. I was 23 and am a 5 foot tall woman. Haha. <laughs> I once had the same exact thing happen to me. However. I ran out in just my boxers holding a Kill Bill battle ready replica sword in one hand. And my pit bull by the collar in the other. My GF hasn't let me live it down. But FCK that, my door was open and I heard a noise. I too. Was a dumbass. I was about 9 yo and I was messing with a really big and hostile dog while he was in chains. I did not hurt him or anything I just made him angry by just standing near him and I was watching him trying to launch at me but the chain was violently pushing him back. After a couple of minutes I got bored and started walking away. And that's when I heard the chain snapping. I was already 10 meters away and started running like the wind. I didn't look back all I could hear was the chain that was rattling while the furious hound was hunting me. I knew I would not be able to run for much longer before he catches me so I saw a big brick fence. It must have been twice my height. Without any thought I jumped and tried to pull myself up. A second before I was able to climb it the dog scratched me and bit my butt. 
but thankfully it let go after a second or two and I managed to fully climb the wall. Not to mention that I actually shat myself so that might have been the reason that he let go. Was body surfing on some big waves one time in Hawaii. Got sucked under a swell and lose my sense of direction of which way was up while having no breath while panicking to find the surface. Time seems to slow down so quickly at that point. First time having a gun pointed in my face. I was 7 years old at the time. It's either that or the time I had a knife to my throat. Being robbed of my wallet and phone at the traffic light. I've been robbed a fair few times. Pretty much got used to it. Barely react anymore. I just make sure my insurance are always up to date. I brushed ways with a pedophile serial killer when I was in elementary and lived. He lured me into his misery den with the promise of puppies in the backyard and locked the front door behind us. He took the lead down the hall and I flipped the deadbolt and bolted home. Just around the block. Still chills me even now in my 30s that I could have been a dead child on a milk carton in the 90s had I not trusted my very young intuition. To me it was scary but I remember when I was a kid I dreamt about killing myself. The dream itself I couldn't exactly remember but it seemed to me that I was dreaming of drinking bleach. Lo and behold. I was sleepwalking. In my laundry room. Drinking bleach. I was really groggy but the instant I opened my eyes the jug I was holding and the taste of bleach hit me like a motherfucker. Luckily my godmother heard me gagging and choking on the floor and immediately called an ambulance. I didn't tell anyone at my school what happened. Or why I was absent for 6 days. Mom just wrote fever. Context. My room is in the first floor. It is the eerie far away from the kitchen. Mom's a doctor. I was once driving home from work at night. There was a traffic jam in front of me, at like 10pm nonetheless, and there was an 18 wheeler in front of me as I was slowing down. For some reason I switched lanes because I did not wish to be behind the 18 wheeler and thankfully I did because two cars proceeded to slam into the back of the 18 wheeler in a pretty terrible wreck. Would have been me sandwiched in between two vehicles and an 18 wheeler. Can still hear and see that wreck when I think about it. Once when I was little I was walking with my younger brother and sister we had gotten a guitar that we bought from my school and there was a person following us at first we thought they were just going to a bus stop but then we noticed that they were still following us and were trying to steal the guitar when we were going home my older brother opened the door and let us and she had noticed that there were people looking so she ended up not trying to snatch it. Lost motor control in my 97 feet Cherokee, bodily function not the car motor, while still conscious. Punched the gas. Drifted into oncoming traffic. Hopped the curb into the easement. I'm doing 50 miles per hour. Ran through a foot thick tree. Flipped the jeep three times. Was pulled out of my windshield by a bystander. I saw all of this happen while not being able to do a thing about it. I walked away with literally a scratch on my head. I found out a month later that my firstborn was due in 9 mo. Sheriff said he's seen less kill people. I have trouble staying composed in vehicles now. I rarely nap. But one of the few times I did. I woke up to loud bangings on the front door. By the time I was able to open my eyes and sit up. There were three guys already going through our stuff. They made me look for our non-existent money and then had me strip and lock myself in the toilet. That bastard cut my favorite bra with scissors because I was too scared to take it off myself. Fortunately, there were not much to take and they didn't actually touch me. Went bowling with a friend when I was a kid and was waiting for my mom to pick us up across the road at a small park. A van drove by and then stopped and turned around so we ran and hid where we could watch. The van pulled into the parking lot and just drove in a circle three times before it finally drove away. Edit. For more info, we were the only two at the park at that time and it was off to the side of a small town. So not many people drive by. Last Friday I was giving a friend a ride to a school event. Our GPS wasn't working and we weren't sure where we were going. We had taken a wrong turn and was on a very secluded back road when a car who we assumed was one of my other friends starting following us. After a while we called him to make sure we were going the right way because if he was following us and if he knew the way then we must be going the right way right? 
Well. When we called he answered and said he was already there and had been for an hour. We freaked out. There was nowhere to turn around. So we had to keep driving until we found a big driveway that we turned around in very quickly and made sure the person was no longer following us. It took us a hole. But we ended up safely making it to the school event. As two high school girls. It was terrifying. But we got there and home safe thank goodness. When I got in my first car wreck. I had my BF at the time. And two of my sisters with me. I remember the sound of tires screeching from the other guy. I remember the sound of the impact of our cars. I remember the feeling of the airbags on my face. And I remember the smell of the smoke. At the time remember desperately hoping that it was a dream. But it was very real. I was so scared for everyone in the car. And the other guy. I'm told by my mother and my sister that I made sure everyone was okay before breaking down and having a panic attack. I still have nightmares about driving. And I am a terribly nervous driver. I was almost lured by a group of teens to the river by my home, we lived across the street and I was playing alone at the playground near my home. But as we crossed a lawn in front of a church my gut suddenly kicked in and my brain screamed run. I turned around to get away and they started beating me up. A priest ran out of the church and stopped them. Brought me inside the rectory to help me with the bruises and bleeding. These kids would have killed me had they succeeded getting me to the river. I'm not peddling religion. I'm atheist. It just happened to be a church that we had to go by to get to the entrance to the road that led to the river. I still shudder when I think about this. I was around 10 years old. My 3 year old sister went outside when no one one knew. IDK who she opened the door. When I found out she was gone I was crying like crazy. My sister said she saw her 2 minutes ago so she couldn't have gone far. I wear a hijab outside. I am a Muslim girl. But at the moment I couldn't think about anything except my little sister. So I ran outside to see she was at my neighbor's house who is two houses away. I had a huge sign of relief. I have never been so scared in my life. My little sister means the world to me. When I took her inside I broke down in tears telling her not to leave the house ever without telling anyone. While I am typing this I am crying my eyes out whenever I talk about this is cry so bad. I don't think anyone understands how much I love her. Recently we returned to our old house to do some final cleanup before the sale went through only to find squatters had moved in overnight and one wanted back in to get his stuff. We tried to insist he wait outside and could get his stuff from police when they arrived. But he was having none of it. It was very scary, especially with our kids with us. Very loud and confrontational escalating until he began threatening us with a stick and then a knife. It was the closest I've ever come to death. Saving my sister from getting sexually abused by a drunk family member. I got completely beaten up. Stabbed and drugged and woke up in the hospital several days later. My sister managed to escape and my parents later found me almost dead. I was 7 and my sister was 3. Multiple super close calls on a motorcycle. Almost got hit head on at 90 miles per hour when a dude swerved into my lane around a corner. I yelled so late and so primal it's so weird how when scared for your life it's a totally different kind of yell. Mugged at knife point. I was surprisingly more calmer than the mugger but lost my phone and my iPod. Didn't really sink in that night but took me months to get back to feeling normal and being able to walk around in public without constantly looking over my shoulder. This happened 2 years I was 21 yo. I am a male. I was taken as hostage by my friend's friend. I was beaten with a bat and a camping chair for 4h and stabbed multiple times for nothing. He even made me write a letter to my mother, last words type deal. The person who did this to me was a drug addict and he thought that I had beaten his female friend while hanging out with her. I wasn't, and he kept saying I owned him money, I didn't. This was so scary to me that I cannot be alone in a house with people I don't know well. I carry a knife nowadays. Sorry for typos. English isn't my native language. Near death experience that I have told before so I will just give the short version this time. 
After a car crash happened I had power line snap right above where I was standing showering me in sparks and at the time it was also raining and I was standing in a puddle. I really thought I was taking my last breath and about to be electrocuted to death but I ended up walking away unhurt. There is a hell of a lot more to the story. This is just the condensed version because I CBF'd writing a novel again. Skidded out on black ice. Tried to even out and slow down. Cossed. Lol nope and spun a full 360 across both lanes of busy traffic. In blowing snow and low visibility. Ended up on the opposite side of the highway in a 3 foot deep snowbank. Facing the opposite direction that I'd been driving. Wondering how the FCK I was still alive and didn't manage to hit another car. A nice guy in a truck with chain tires saw me wipe out. Came and towed me back onto the road. And home I went. Normal winter in Canada saw. This happened in April or March. It was noon of a Tuesday if I badly remember. A guy entered up by the front door and stole my dad's bicycle and left. The scary part? He entered like nothing. Giving me and my family an extreme feeling of feeling unsecured even in on our house. And if it wasn't thanks to my sister today we wouldn't know that happened. When I was 5-6 I almost got abducted. I was lucky enough to watch Unsolved Mysteries and my mom always instilled in me not to trust strangers. So the temp school bus driver took me to the wrong house. There were two men on lawn chairs claiming I was their daughter. They were from Ghana I think. I'm not from anywhere near there. Then a Ghanan woman came out of the house saying I was her daughter and luring me out of the bus. I ended up trying to explain in my scared state that they weren't my family. I'm not adopted. Eventually the bus driver took me to the correct house. I didn't tell my parents because I somehow thought it was my fault or I was too scared to bring it up. I was just relieved to be at home.